In today's Q&A video, we're gonna cover six comments that you have posted on our content this month. I'm Kirby Allison, and I love helping the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes. Join me as we explore the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. It's my favorite time of the month, it's our Q&A video. And for this month's Q&A, we're gonna be reviewing some of the comments that you all have posted on our content. I can't tell you how much I love and appreciate your comments that you leave on our content. It's those comments that make this channel fun, allow me to interact with you guys, and help us reach more people. Just a reminder that if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please click the subscribe button in the lower right-hand corner and turn on the notifications by clicking the bell so that you can learn whenever we publish new content. And of course, whenever you're watching our videos, please help us reach more people by liking, commenting, and most importantly, sharing our video with your friends. Our first question today is on a video that we just published, and that is my desert island shoes. So a lot of people on this channel ask the question that if I were to only have five shoes, which ones would I choose? So we took this and we put it into our desert island video, where if I was going to a desert island, which among all my shoes would I choose if I was only allowed five? And his comment reads, my top five desert island shoes would be flip-flops, sandals, desert boots or chukkas, galoshes, and scuba fins. I live, Kirby dies. <laughs> Great comment. Uh, I agree on the scuba fins and the desert boots and the chukkas, uh, but I really would prefer to stay away from any types of flip-flops or sandals. Uh, instead, uh, I oftentimes use an old pair of loafers or boat shoes in lieu of flip-flops. I just find that they look nicer. Uh, and the galoshes, uh, who would need galoshes? I would have wooden planking anywhere that I would be walking on the island, so that wouldn't be something I'd need to worry about. Uh, but thank you for your comment. Uh, yeah, I appreciate you having fun with this. Uh, it really goes back to the original purpose of that video was to try to have fun with an otherwise serious question, which what are the five kind of classic shoes that if any man was building a wardrobe, he wouldn't wanna organize that wardrobe around? So even though we did this within the context of uh, Desert Island shoes uh, being a little tongue in cheek, uh, I think that the advice still remains valid that if anyone was looking to begin a shoe wardrobe and really wanted to focus on the fundamentals or the basics, that those are the five kind of fundamental check boxes that every man needs to check. We actually created this video as a result of some of the comments on this channel. Uh, and this is one of the reasons that I really wanna encourage everyone to comment and engage on this channel and not just watch uh, without commenting at all because it's your comments and your feedback that not only makes this channel more fun, but gives us great video suggestions and allows me to feel like I'm connecting directly with all of you. Our next comment is from uh, Mason uh, Rudesheim. Uh, and it's on our video about our new permanent collection of sovereign grade dress socks entitled, Are These the Best Dress Socks in the World? And the uh, answer hint is yes, they are. Uh, and it reads, uh, what do you do if you have large calves? Every single pair of over the calf socks I've ever had, I, I can either uh, get over my calves uh, or I can, but the socks don't stay up because the elastic wears out in three to five wears. Uh, so Mason, that is a great question. Uh, and it's one of the reasons uh, that we actually added a small element at the top of all of our socks called the gambietto. I'm probably saying that wrong, it's Italian. But basically all of our socks, you know, have this standard kind of two inches of elastic right here at the top, you know, that it is supposed to help grip the calf and prevent the sock from sliding down. But underneath that, we have this special one by one rib that you can see is another full, you know, three to four inches uh, down the calf. And the purpose of this is to give extra elasticity to this area of the sock to allow it to really stretch as much as possible over the calves. So uh, I would certainly say that at a minimum, uh, this is going to help this sock stretch over your calves better than if it didn't have that element right there. Now the second element that's really important uh, to helping your socks you know, really get over the calves uh, really honestly come, just comes down to sizing. And that's the reason we have five sizes to all of our sovereign grade socks. Maybe if you're a tall gentleman, you, know, you need a slightly longer uh, leg to your sock so you need to size up. Uh, or if you're someone that has particularly large calves, you might need to size up also. So I'd say in the beginning, play around with that a little bit. Uh, normally they should fit pretty true to size and that extra elasticity should allow these to get over your calves. But if not, I would recommend just trying to go up one additional size. Now another thing, 
to keep in mind with elasticity is that how you launder your socks is incredibly, incredibly important, especially when it comes to retaining that kind of rebound to the elasticity. Uh, and the secret is to never dry your socks in a dryer with high heat, really uh, in the dryer at all, to be completely honest. And we have an entire video specifically on this subject on how to launder your dress socks, because really it is so important whenever you begin investing in quality dress socks. You know, if you're spending $45 on a pair of dress socks, it's without question a lot of money. And if you know how to launder your socks properly, and if you darn them and mend them to the extent that they rip it all because of sharp toenails, you can really make a pair of socks that you might get a few months, maybe six months to a year out of, and you could really stretch the lifetime of that sock several years. Uh, I have several socks in my wardrobe, you know, where the toes have been mended once or twice uh, that still look beautiful and wear great just because I've taken the time to launder them properly. If you haven't checked out our collection, please go to hangerproject.com. We have an absolutely uh, beautiful permanent collection of sovereign grade socks all knit exclusively for us. One of my favorite socks, uh, actually this is probably uh, without question my favorite sock. You guys have seen me wear it several times. Uh, and that is our small dot melange dress sock. I absolutely love this sock because one, it's a fancy pattern. It's not a solid stripe. So you get a little bit more visual texture. I love the small dot, but even more than the small dot, what I love about this sock is the small melange effect that you have in the weave of the barrel or the knit of the barrel. These are knitted socks. Uh, and you have this small kind of visual variation of color that really just makes these socks beautiful. I mean, that gray is incredible. Uh, here is kind of the blue or the navy. I mean, absolutely beautiful sock with great texture. All of the socks in our permanent collection are really are those staples that are easy to wear. They're classics. They work with almost anything. And that I promise you, you will absolutely enjoy. So next uh, question we have is on our Piccadilly uh, Arcade walking tour uh, from commenter Healthy Living 77 uh, and his comment reads, I need this for New York. I just decided I need to visit mainly for menswear and fashion. I don't know if you're talking about visiting London or if you're talking about visiting New York, uh, but we are actually planning to be in New York the week of August 12th. Uh, and maybe this is an idea for filming a quick little walking tour of New York. New York is a little bit different than London in that it's more spread out. One of the things I love about Newt London, and one of the elements that I really think makes this city so great for men to shop, is that there's very distinct and concise shopping districts. So you've got German Street, where all the uh, heritage shoemakers have set up shop. You've got the Piccadilly Arcade, where you've got Bud Shirt Makers, and you've got uh, Benson and Clegg, and you've got Deacon and Francis. You've got these incredible accessory shops there. And then you can walk over to Savile Row, and visit, of course, all the Savile Row bespoke tailoring houses. Uh, there is no question that London is the pinnacle of men's shopping anywhere in the world. That being said, there are a ton of great places for men to shop in New York, uh, and we'd love to film a video on that. So if you have any suggestions of your favorite shops, uh, let us know, and maybe whenever we're in New York this uh, coming August, uh, we'll film a quick little walking tour. Our next question is from Dictator Caesar. We've got a lot of great uh, subscribers, as you can tell, on this channel. Uh, and it's on our very, uh, every necktie you'll ever need a review of our Sovereign Grade permanent collection, uh, one of which I'm wearing today. This is our, uh, this is our floral motif a jacquard, which is a woven tie. It's in a beautiful burgundy, which goes great with the white shirt and the gray suit. And his comment reads, uh, these are beautiful. I've been waiting to see Hanger Project's uh, tie assortment grow. Uh, I'm excited about that also. We have a, a growing tie assortment. This is just the beginning of what will be a very robust selection of some of the finest handmade ties in the world. Uh, his question reads, I'm just curious, how's the lining on these ties? Is it thin? Is it the entire length of the tie or only mid-length like vintage ties from the 1930s and 1940s? Uh, so great question. Uh, the lining is, without question, probably one of the most important aspects of the tie. I and mean, it's really the guts of the tie that gives that tie its body, that helps control how nice of a knot that it ties, the type of dimple that you're able to get. Uh, and to be totally honest, finding the right linings for our ties probably was the most difficult part of us developing our sovereign grade 
collection because there's so many options. You don't see the lining of a tie, but it's so important in determining how that tie looks and how it wears. And so for that reason, it really did take us a long time. We tried several different types of linings, several different weights, uh, several different combinations. And what we finally settled at uh, was a very unique kind of special combination of a felt lining and a linen lining together, but the weights and how we put those together is, is quite kind of unique and proprietary to us. And as you can see, it really creates an absolutely beautiful, uh, not just knot, but more importantly dimple because it's that kind of rigidity or that structure to the lining that helps your tie rebound and really flare out whenever it comes out of the tie itself. And then over a long-term horizon, because whenever you buy a tie, you really expect to have it forever, the interlining and how that interlining is attached to the, uh, the tie through the floating slip stitch is really what determines how your tie wears uh, 5, 10, 15 years from now. And so all these elements are incredibly important. Another important characteristic or another small detail is that say for instance with our grenadine ties, we can't use the same lining with our grenadine ties that we use on the rest of our ties uh, because one, the silk weights are different, but two, because of the way it's woven with that open weave, you can actually see through the tie slightly. So if we used the standard kind of white linings or natural uh, colored linings that we use with our standard ties, you'd see that on a grenadine. So we have to have a whole separate uh, selection of uh, linings that we use for our grenadine ties that are black to really give them that nice, dark, beautiful aesthetic. So regarding the weight and the length, uh, we line the entire length of our tie because again, uh, it helps uh, create that nice, beautiful, kind of smooth drape. Uh, and you know, I've had unlined ties. I'd have, uh, I've had seven fold ties. I've had, you know, half or three quarter line ties. Uh, and you know, it's great, you know, there's a lot of kind of embellishment there, uh, there's a lot of handwork, but at the end of the day, if you want a tie that is gonna stand the test of time, that's gonna look great day in, day out, you really can't beat a proper three-fold tie with a great interlining that goes the full length of the tie. And that's why with our Sovereign Grade, uh, all of our ties are made with all of the details that matter and none of them that don't. Uh, and if you haven't tried one of our Sovereign Grid collection of ties, please visit hangarproject.com and check them out. So our next question today is from Trevor Hurst, and it's on uh, unboxing my Dominic Casey bespoke shoes. And his question reads, uh, what happens if the shoes don't fit perfectly or something changes down the line and they need to be adjusted? So great question. Anyone that watched that Dominic Casey unboxing video may have picked up on the fact that the uh, shoes had a little bit too much uh, room or a little too much volume across the vamp. What really uh, distinguishes a beautiful, perfectly uh, fitting pair of bespoke shoes is really the absence of volume. You want the shoe to fit as close to the foot as possible. Now, not only does it make that more comfortable because the shoe is really holding and supporting your foot, but it also reduces the amount of wrinkling that you get across the shoe because there's just less leather to wrinkle and bend. Now, Dominic's shoes uh, were a little too large, and so we're gonna need to have those shoes adjusted. Uh, and actually, Dominic did a second fitting shoe for me that we have right here that we're gonna unbox for you later today uh, that is using some of the feedback that I was able to give him uh, in that first video for some adjustments that he made on this last. And you know, everyone talks about their perfectly fitting bespoke shoes, but I have to be completely honest. Most of my bespoke shoes from almost every single maker haven't fit perfectly the first time. And that's really just part of the process. You know, people don't talk about it. And yes, everyone would prefer, you know, the ideal uh, of their shoes just being bang on perfect the first time, but it's just not how it works out in reality. You know, to really reach that zenith, that pinnacle of the perfectly fitting bespoke shoe, you've got to iterate a little bit. Now, some people do this, you know, through your first pair and hoping that it's right. And if it's not, remaking it. Uh, some people do it like Gaziano and Gerling and Daniel Wiegand through doing several different trial shoes. Every shoemaker has their own uh, approach and method. Uh, but at the end of the day, the real test is that when a shoe doesn't fit, is a maker willing to totally scrap that and remake the shoes? And with Dominic Casey, I can say unequivocally uh, is uh, just an incredible gentleman that totally stands behind his work. And so whenever we spoke about that, uh, he immediately offered uh, to do another pair. And so we've got that right here. It's actually out of a different material that I'll show you in the unboxing. And once we nail the fitting uh, through the second pair, then he'll go back and remake the first pair. 
Last question of the day is from Scott McAllister, and it's on our Luca Rubinacci Teaches Me Italian Tailoring video. Uh, this was an incredibly fun video where we virtually visited uh, Rubinacci's Atelier in Milan with Luca Rubinacci. We did it via FaceTime. Technology is uh, really incredible, uh, and it really felt like I was right there. And so it was fun to be able to visit Luca, uh, who is one of those style icons I really admire, and have him invite us into his shop and show us around. If you haven't seen that video, uh, I strongly encourage you to check that out. Uh, his comment reads, like Kirby, Luca is a great person to follow. Always a positive, upbeat way to start your day and get ideas on how you might put your outfit together. I often use the Rubinacci knot when tying my tie. Great video and thank you for posting. So, uh, Scott, thank you. I mean, like you, I really admire Luca. He's got incredible style. I mean, he really personifies, you know, the sprezzatura. I mean, this casual uh, kind of elegance and uh, uh, exciting way to dress, you know, that isn't flamboyant. It's not out there in left field. He's not peacocking, uh, but he really puts uh, his wardrobe together uh, with interesting color, uh, color combinations uh, and, you know, in a really creative way that gives him a very unique style without being contrived or overt about it. And I really appreciate that about him. Another thing I love about Luca is anyone that doesn't follow his uh, Instagram uh, really should consider following it because uh, he has uh, just these great videos that he puts together several times a week, you know, talking about different elements of style and uh, how to put things together. And anyone that's really interested in just dressing better and the Italian aesthetic really has a lot to learn. I know that I've learned a tremendous amount from Luca's Instagram videos. So Scott, thanks for watching that video. I appreciate your comment. And I really hope to be able to use uh, some of these video chats to visit more makers around the world that we would otherwise not have the opportunity to travel to see. If you have any suggestions of other people you'd like to see us interview over FaceTime, please let us know in the comments section below. We really use those suggestions to go out and uh, plan which videos we film in the future. Once again, thank you guys for all of your comments and questions. I really do read and try to get back to as many of those as possible. You see on every single new video we publish, I'm engaging with you as you're posting your comments. So if you see a new video published, please, it's the best time to chime in, offer your thoughts, like that video, share it. All those things not only help us all engage better to one another, but it helps our videos reach more people. So I appreciate your help helping us grow by liking, commenting, and subscribing to our channel. We've got other great content coming up. You can see I've got the unboxing of our Dominic Casey shoes. This is the second trial shoe he's sending me. Uh, and then under here, I've got a FedEx box. It's my first shirt from Will Whiting that we're gonna unbox also and you're gonna get to see me try on. And please visit hangerproject.com where we have the largest collection of luxury garment care and luxury shoe care products in the world, as well as other accessories like these great sovereign grade ties and sovereign grade dress socks. I'm Kirby Allison. Thanks for joining me.